Welcome back to the Live to Grind podcast show. I'm Brendan C. Adams, and on today's show, we have Bill Jennings. How's it going, buddy? Good. Good, Good to see you, man. Dude, this is, uh, I'm excited for this show because, I mean, you basically help people get the money they need to start a business, to cash flow. I mean, let's face it, cash is king. And so, and so many entrepreneurs getting started, they don't have any money. Or right. even entrepreneurs that are doing seven, let's face it, let's be real. There are entrepreneurs out there doing multiple, multiple six figures, they're doing seven figures, and they still need cash to be able to run their business. They got employees, they got expenses. I know from having a brick and mortar business that dude, shit ain't cheap. A truck breaks down, I gotta buy a new truck for $80,000. I got all these different things to spend money on. And if you can't get access to that capital, your business is dead. Completely. You're completely dead. And and that's why I'm gonna have you share literally how you can help people with that. But before we even go into that, how did you get into this business? What got you into helping people get the money they need? Yeah, so it really, it didn't even start with uh, with businesses, to be honest with you. It started my, one of my very first jobs out of school was I was selling cars, okay? and uh, Selling I, cars. I hated it, all right? Most, yeah. most salespeople all start with the story they started selling cars, right? I started selling cars and it was a hot summer day and it was my very first day out of training. And the first car that I sold was to a girl who worked as a mortgage processor. And uh, I, I sold her a car and she said to me, she's like, you know, you're, you're really good at sales. She's like, have you ever thought about getting in the mortgage industry? And this was when the mortgage industry was just booming. It was exploding. It was yeah. like 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. And I was like, no, I haven't. And uh, so she hooked me up with an interview and I got into the mortgage. <laughs> I worked one, one actual day one on the One interview and you went in. Yeah, so I went one interview and I uh, got hired pretty much on the spot and I started doing mortgages. So from there, I started selling mortgages and I segued into, after a couple years, I realized that there's a lot more money to be made if I had my own mortgage shop, right? So, yeah. so I started with a small brokerage uh, doing mortgages, all subprime type stuff back during, you know, the, like I said, mid 2000s. And uh, that kind of blew up and we, we became one of the largest, you know, mortgage brokers in, uh, in, in that area, basically in the Midwest. Um, so we kind of exploded, we're doing nationwide funding at that point and uh, then the market crashed. So market totally tanked, and all we worked on was people with you know subprime credit, so people who had lower credit scores. So that was the first industry to, or part of the industry to dry up. So the mortgage industry was pretty much dead. Um, we pretty much closed our doors, and at that point I segued into real estate investing because now obviously everybody's houses were foreclosing. I saw the trend, and I realized I could make a killing off of Get buying it. you know real estate right now, right? So so I got pretty heavy into real estate investing, and I was using um, private money basically. So uh, people that I had met kind of from networking, people who had cash that weren't really looking to get into real estate investing, but they wanted to make some money off of their, their money, right? So so I started borrowing money from these guys to start buying houses, and uh, I did really well as a real estate investor. Um, but at one point, there was one property that I had, pretty much I was at to the point where we were supposed to be closing soon, and I had an investor that had put money up for this property, and I had also put up some money for this property, and uh, he backed out at the last minute. So it was either I was gonna lose all the money that I had put up for it, or I had to find some other means of financing. And all my own capital was tied up at the time. Um, I had just gone through a divorce, so my credit was shot. So I had, <laughs> yeah. I had no way of getting a loan That's... for the short period of time. So um, bad situation, but I, I really liked the property. I wanted to be able to move forward on it. I was gonna make a bunch of money off of it. So I got kind of creative and I started thinking, who do I know that has good credit? And how could I leverage their credit to get me a loan quick? Because there's no time to get a mortgage on the property. That wasn't going to happen. I had to find creative capital. Um, so I found a buddy of mine whose dad actually was interested in helping me out. And uh, he kind of I used his credit to get access to these, uh, these business credit lines. And I took Explain these, that. Yeah. Use his credit. Yes. So, so, so basically, when you have a business, um, there's two different types of credit, right? You've got personal credit. Think of a personal credit card that you get, right? Yeah. And then you've got business credit. So if you have a business set up, you can get credit in the business's name also, all right? So when they do that, they don't just base it off of the business. They actually look at the, one of the owners of the business or a signing officer of the business. They look at their credit to see if you qualify. So me, myself, with my credit being bad, I didn't qualify. But uh, this guy's credit did qualify. So he, what I basically did was I was able to get my business funded well, the underwriter looked at his credit. Basically, he was vouching for it, essentially. He was saying, yes, I vouched like for this Like a co-sign over a loan, kind of. Like a co-signer, essentially, right. Very similar to a co-signer situation. So, so he co-signed, or he, he basically uh, guaranteed the funds that I was getting in my business, and I used that money. I think I got like 60-something thousand dollars at the time, and it was enough for me to close on the property. So I closed on the property, rehabbed it, made a bunch of money off of the property, and uh, at that point, what my normal way that I did this stuff was, I would then take the profit from that property and use it to purchase another one. But I realized I don't need to do that because I just figured out how to get access to capital, right? Yeah. And it was at 0% interest. Zero. So I, I was used to paying 15% to my private money guy, and I had to sit there and kind of follow his rules. So he only wanted me to buy properties in certain neighborhoods and only ones that had certain school ratings and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Now I can open up the doors where I can go anywhere because it's my own cash, right? 
So, so I realized I'm not going to actually put my profit into another property. I'm going to put that in my pocket and actually start enjoying myself a little bit instead of rolling it. So I put some money away and then I was able to take you know, that, that credit line and I was able to, again, purchase another property. And I kept doing that. So I kind of was like, man, I feel like I just cracked the code right now, right? Yeah. Like I'm kind of, all my friends that I was investing with, you know, previous to that, they're realizing I'm buying more properties and I'm buying more properties and they're still doing one or two at a time. Uh, so I started kind of showing them how to do this. So I showed them how to use their own credit to get access to business capital. And I showed them how to use other people's credit to get access to business capital. And then the light bulb went off and I was like, why am I sitting here chasing around properties all day long? This is obviously I don't have a, to. I, I don't have, have to. <laughs> this is a service that everybody wants to use. So I stopped giving it to free for my friends and I started and then charging, charging a fee. It. Yeah. And basically they became part of your company well, it, going around and doing it, you got a percentage of it. Exactly, exactly what happened. So, so at that point, I kind of realized I, I can kind of resurrect the, the mortgage company that I had, but kind of do it in a sense of uh, business and real estate financing. So, so when, you, when you did this, you had this aha moment, which, yeah. by the way, you saw your problem and you found a way to solve it, and you're like, well, shit, I can profit from this. Yep. When you saw that, were there other people doing this? Uh, this specific, no, there was not, no. So you were kind of like the first to market to, to, to kind of use it for that purpose, right? I mean, obviously people were getting business credit lines and stuff like that, but for the, the exact way that we were doing it, no, it was, it was kind of a, a new idea. And, and the big thing is too, for like the first, I'd say maybe six months that we started doing this again, I was just doing it for real estate investors because that's all that really made sense to me because that's what I yep. knew. And then as I was doing it, I realized like, I'm, I'm telling people these are business credit lines, but I'm not really talking to any other businesses except for real estate investors. Yeah. So that's when I realized that I can really grow this business because every business owner in the country is looking for access to capital. As you kind of said at the beginning, it doesn't matter if you're brand new or if you're doing millions of dollars, right? More money, more problems, right? So even exactly. if you're doing big business, all that means is you have bigger expenses that you need money for, right? <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't change anything, yeah. right? So, so at that point, we're able to kind of help everybody. So that's really where we went with it. And then I kind of obviously grew into you know more employees, more employees, and then we started you know lending nationwide. And that's pretty much where we are today. So, so talk about, step back a second. So when you first got started and your first like, you had your aha moment, you started doing this, yeah. your first like six months to a year, what are some things you learned, like maybe some things that went wrong in the whole process oh, of man. helping people? What well, went right would be a shorter list for you probably, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. No, so <laughs> that's really the main thing about this business and what we do is it's data, right? So so when we first start doing it, there's, there's a certain amount of lenders that we can work with and there's certain rules and underwriting guidelines that each lender has. So um, just like riding a bike, the first time you rode your bike, you realize I got a pedal like this, right? And then you fell and you realize, oh, well, maybe I should yeah. avoid that rock in the road next time, right? And you you yeah. kind of learn as you go. It's the same thing. We learn that this lender needs, um, you know, th th these are their underwriting guidelines. So here's kind of what we need to do to get around it. So in order to kind of maximize funding, it's a, it's a big system. So the more deals that we did, we realized how we needed to tweak things. We realized that, you know, this lender looks for this. This lender looks for, th for this. And the more data that we compiled, we were able to put it into a system and kind of predict what the next file was gonna look like. So for example, let's say you know you had a client that came to me for funding right now. After we look at their credit, I'm able to put it into our system and it'll kind of tell me through like a predictive you know, analysis of, hey, past clients with this credit report was able to yield these results of these specific lenders. Back on day one, we didn't have that because we had no data. No track right? record at all. No track yeah. record. So as things changed, as the market changed, which the market's changed a ton since we first started doing this, we had to kind of alter those things. So um, it was, it's been a process. Now we pretty much have it you know, down, but as soon as we feel like we have it 100% down, then it changes. another change in the market. I mean, again, it's like right? somebody comes to you now and you, based off their situation, you yeah. have these boxes. Okay, which one does it fit in? We've worked with 10 people in the past this way. How can I help them with that? Exactly. exactly. That makes it a lot easier. I mean, there's a learning curve for everything, for everything. starting out. So what was the scaling process like? So you started bringing people on. Yeah. How did you train them, incentivize them? I, I'm thinking of Wolf of Wall Street right now. <laughs> like how he brought these people in. He, he motivated them. I don't want to call you the Wolf of Wall Street, but I mean. You know what's really funny about that is after that movie came out, my mom went to the theater to see this movie. And now, if you remember this movie, this isn't a movie you want to think about your mom seeing, right? And my mom texted me. Oh my God, I think me, of the airplane scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom texted me and said, um, I kind of worry about you because I saw this movie and I thought, I feel like that's you in your office. She's like, you do treat your employees better than that, right? So it's funny that you say that because my mom shared the same <laughs> sentiment. So yes, <laughs> uh, similar but better, right? Yeah. Um, no, so, so basically when we started scaling, the problem was, when I had the mortgage company, it was easy to scale because hiring people wasn't a problem. Everybody has heard of a mortgage. Yeah. If, even if they don't understand how mortgages work, they know mortgages exist, yeah. okay? So it's a pretty easy thing to kind of get people on board of, hey, try selling this product for us, we give mortgages. 
But when you start explaining this product to people, you realize that people don't know that this exists out there. It's not something that people have, have worked with. It's pretty much a new product that we created in a sense, right? You so educate it, them, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have to get, get over the hurdle of kind of explaining to people how this works and that it is you know, a useful tool in this industry and that there's a, there's a desperate need for it. Uh, so after explaining all of that, it kind of like was a little bit easier to get people on board, but the training process was a lot more difficult because first we had to train them on who we are and what we do and why yeah. we're doing it the way that we're doing and actually training them on the product. So we started bringing people on and, and really what we did was it, we realized in order to scale and help as many people as possible, it was easier to go nationwide. So instead of just focusing on our core office and just hiring people you know, in the office, yep. it was easier to bring people on all across the country. So we started up our what we call our affiliate program. So basically anybody that's in a related industry, whether you're a, you know, a, a contractor or you're a realtor or you're a CPA, anybody who interacts with business owners or real estate investors on a daily basis, train them on the basics of our industry and what we do and how we can help and have them just refer business to us. We give them a commission for doing so. So now we're able to kind of grab a larger part of the country all at once, opposed to trying to you know set up an office in each So town. how many like affiliates do you have across the country? We probably have around 350 signed up with us. Not every one of them is sending us business on a daily basis, but yeah, I mean, we've got around 350. So they're basically, they see an opportunity where one of their clients, I mean, they obviously want to get paid, yes. can't afford it. They say, hey, go to Bill, he yep. can get you the funding, get the funding, they get paid, you get paid, they get the money what they want. Yeah. I mean, it's a win-win. It's easier for them to sell their product, right? Because yeah. it's always easier to get somebody to agree and commit to buy something from you if it's zero money out of pocket, right? Exactly. So that, that's, that's the one part. And then we also do have people who just full-time, they're just out there hustling deals for us. So we obviously love those people as that well. That they're like a broker. They're just a complete broker, yeah. So yeah. what was it like, I'm curious, scaling your team, like bringing them on, how did you get them trained to understand this? Just because it's new. Again, you yeah. were still learning. Yeah. How did you just like motivate them? Hey, you get X percent if you get this. Here's what we got to do. Were they pure commission? Or yeah. They... So the majority of the people are, are pure commission, are, are yeah. processors. That's a hard business for some people. You can have the right mindset, but it can be very lucrative, obviously, because yes. it's buy or die. Yeah, completely. Or you, sell or die. Sell, yeah. Yeah, sell or die. You, you have to find the right people. Yeah. Um, sales is not for everybody. Yeah. And working on commission is not for everybody. You need the you need the people that are motivated. You, live, you need the people that are living to grind, right? That's living what you to grind, need, right? That's and stuff Wolf that you Street need in some ways. <laughs> yes. You need you need those people. You have people that are hustlers. People who want to get out there and earn. And you're right. There is a ramp up period of actually learning the product. So we try yeah. putting together you know the best training that we could to kind of educate them on credit educate them on the other options that are available for business owners, which is a really slim amount of products at this point, educate them on how our product is better. Um, our, our main goal when we're dealing with anybody is trying to figure out what their story is, what they're trying to accomplish, and trying to find a way to, to, to get them you know, th to that point. So let's talk about your selling point. Yeah. Why is your product better than the other options out there? Which the other options we're talking about, bank, or what other options for money? Yeah, so main options for, for business lending right now is, is yeah, a traditional bank loan, a SBA loan, which is kind of like a government-backed yep. loan, um, which they take forever to get oh approved. The, the average SBA loan, I think, sits in underwriting for about six months before you actually get an approval, and yep. it's rare they even get approved. It's, I mean, I think it's probably in the teens of percent-wise of people yeah. that actually get approved for these loans. And the main reason is people don't know what they need to put together to actually you know put a nice package together, yeah. and they want to see financials. They collateralize everything. If you get an SBA loan, Let's say, let's say you're married, okay? You get an SBA loan, not only do they collateralize everything that you own, but they collateralize everything that your wife owns. 401k, IRA, savings account, cars, house. Even everything. if you have two mortgages on your house, they still put another lien on your house. So your, your business is gonna succeed or you actually are gonna die, is basically <laughs> how that works. Taking you down with <laughs> yes. So it's very, very risky and trying to you know come home and pitching your idea to your wife is one thing. She's like, okay, good luck with your business. Yeah. My house is gonna be in jeopardy, no! <laughs> right, it changes everything completely. So um, that's one part, is, is what, with, with what we do, there's no collateral. So everything's unsecured. If things were to go bad, with, let's face it, sometimes businesses don't go exactly as planned, right? Yeah. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you know, a collection on your credit report, right? It's yeah. not, they don't have any collateral, they're not gonna take yeah. anything from you. Um, other options besides SBA loans is there are something called a merchant cash advance. Um, which Merchant Cash Advance only works for existing businesses. Yeah. And basically the way that look that works is they look at your credit card sales every single month. Okay. All right? And what they'll do is they'll pretty much program a, we'll call it like a bridge, a little like a fork in your uh, credit card machine. And what'll happen is if they give you a loan for let's say 20 grand, from now on until that 20 grand's paid back, every time somebody swipes your credit, uh, credit card, a portion of it goes to your bank account, a portion of it goes to pay this loan back. Exactly. So if you have a really high volume day, 
you're really not feeling the high volume day anymore yeah, because the majority exactly. of it is going to them, right? So it's just extremely high interest. Um, it's it's a risky transaction. It's it's basically the equivalent of a payday loan, but for businesses. And yeah. it kind of puts you into the cycle of always needing them, which yep. great for them, not so good for the business owner, yeah. right? Um, so those are really the main options, aside from being lucky enough to be on Shark Tank and possibly getting somebody to buy into <laughs> yeah, your business, know, right? right? But the problem with that too, I mean, even when you go on Shark Tank, let, let's say, you know, Mark Cuban or one of these guys actually decides to invest in you, they're sharks, right? They're taking a large percentage of your they business. Are. And sometimes that isn't what you need. Sometimes you just need an influx of cash. You don't need a partner. You don't need somebody taking 50% of your profits. So let's talk about you. So yeah. let's say, give an example. I, I'm going to be fun this. I need 150000 to to film a TV show. Yeah. And I come to you and say, hey, Bill, here's my situation. How can you help me get the money? What does it look like? Yeah, so first thing that we would do is kind of analyze exactly how much you need, right? So let's say it's 150 is, you know, that's exactly how yep. much money you need. First thing we would do is we would look at your credit. We take yep. a look at your personal credit and see if we think that we can qualify you for that amount. Because a lot of times, although we can lend up to 150,000, sometimes we're not going to be able to get, you know, you specifically 150,000. And if we can't get you to that point, we're going to strategize on how to get you to that point in the future. Yep. Um, one main way we do that is just because somebody comes to us for, you know, one round of funding doesn't mean we can't get them additional funding after that. Yep. Um, because it's business credit, it, I can set you up with multiple businesses and fund every one of them. Yeah. So let's say I can only get you 75 grand on the first time around. We can set up a second corporation for you and get you another 75 So basically grand. you look at the route to make that and it may be three different ways to fund it. Exactly. From different components. Exactly. And it might be a mixture of, we have installment loan programs and we have a uh, line of credit program. So it might be a mixture of the but two. But you figure out the solution because be. most people will be like, hey, you can't get it. Like you can't Correct. just get it and they shut Correct. you down. They won't put in the work. No. Yeah, we specialize in thinking outside the box. I want to find a solution for you. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to turn anybody down and tell them that we don't have anything for them. We literally have a product for anybody that calls us. It may not be what you're looking for. It may not be the hundred fifty thousand, yes. but you're going to leave here in a better situation than you came to us. Whether that means just getting your credit repaired and into a better position, yep. or getting you actually some sort of funding. So we, we leave no stone unturned. I want to make sure that everybody has something. <laughs> so what about the people that come to you and yeah. they have horrible credit and they need? Mm -hmm. 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars. Yeah. So there's there's a couple options for that. So one, first we would say, do you have what's your cash flow look like? If yeah. you have sales already, we might be able to get you a loan based on your sales. Okay. Yeah. That we don't really care so much about credit. If you're a brand new company and your credit is, you know, not in a good enough position to get funded, uh, one thing we can look at is repairing your credit, which credit repair is an industry that some people um, A don't know exists. And B, there's a lot of people out there that don't do the most ethical things when it comes to credit repair, yeah. so it kind of has a bad name. Um, so we kind of educate them on credit repair and how it works and how we can get them into a position to hopefully get funded in the future. Problem with credit repair is it takes time. Nothing good happens overnight with credit. Um, on average, I would say we're between three and six months, sometimes longer. Yeah. Um, nothing can happen for at least 30 days. That's you know pretty much guideline that you know credit bureaus have 30 days yeah. to respond to a claim, so it takes at least that long. Um, so if somebody's in a situation where they need money now, there's kind of two options. One, we put them into credit repair and start working on that. And two, we tell them to start looking for what we call a credit partner. Uh, one thing we talk about a lot is uh, people know what OPM is, right? Other people's, other people's money. money. Um, what we like to talk about is OPC, other people's credit. Okay. So because, as I kind of explained in my, my personal experience when I started everything, I didn't use my credit to fund that real estate deal, Somebody if you remember. I used, I used a friend's dad, right? So, so that works as well. Because it's business credit, nothing reports to your personal credit. You can pretty much use whoever. So if that person had a business partner or a family member or a friend who had good credit that believed in their vision and was willing to help them out, we would take a look at their credit and see if we can fund them that way. So basically, use their credit. And for them, I mean, obviously, if the person pays it back, it doesn't affect them by any means. Correct. And they Correct. could actually make money in the process. I mean, you're telling yeah. me, tell me about like how people even on Craigslist yeah. reach. So it's, it's crazy because you would think that that's the, I mean, when I go on Craigslist, I'm looking for a used cell phone or something like <laughs> that, right? I'm not, I'm not really looking for financial <laughs> advice on Craigslist typically, but we get such a great response uh, from our clients when we tell them to advertise on Craigslist for credit partners because there are people out there looking for anything. And to some people, um, credit is more important than money in a certain situation, yeah. which maybe this business owner would be willing to part with a little bit of cash if they had access to a larger amount of money by using somebody's credit. And for other people, cash is more important than their credit. So you just put an ad up saying, hey, look, I'm willing to pay X amount of dollars to somebody for their, you know, for their good credit. You'll draw a lot of attention. You'll get a lot of phone calls and people will call and believe it or not, they're willing sometimes to work with you. You know, it's crazy. You just been spend the day with you and work on different things, how seriously using other people's money. The yep. one thing, and Jack Barron has been on the show before, 
he said to me, Brandon, always use other people's money. And what that means, I mean, it could be other people's money, friends and family who started helping you at the beginning, investors, but specifically in this case, you can help, actually, you get them funded, use somebody's money, it's a tool. Yeah. And really, people go to the bank, and they might be turned down by the bank, by the day, they can come to you, and you can actually get the money for them from the same damn bank, yes. but it's coming from you because you know how to get them the money. And that, that's the key. The, the problem with banks nowadays is they are so large and they're so compartmentalized that the person, the banker that you're working with, does not understand, was not trained, and isn't even allowed to understand how their system works. They're, they're essentially, if you apply for a loan with Chase Bank, for example, right? You can go to their website and apply for a loan also, but you kind of feel like, well, if I go directly to a banker, I'll get my questions answered and you know, they'll get be it, able yeah. to help me out. They literally, I'm not joking, they're literally just going to chase.com and typing the information in for you. That's really all that they're doing. There, there isn't a special system. I mean, we, we work very closely with bankers at, at certain places that we have solid relationships with, and I'll ask them questions like, you know, why did this person get declined? Oh, well, I'm not sure. Well, can't you look in the notes from the underwriter? We're not allowed to have access to that. They don't understand anything about how the system works. They just know how to do they data They probably entry. don't even care. They don't care either. They just want to go on lunches for the most part, right? So <laughs> that's what they're concerned about. Hey, where's my paycheck? Yes. So they're, they're literally just doing data entry. They're, they're just typing in information. So what we do is we track the metrics. We track which banks approve when, all the way down to the time of day that they, that they approve things. Sometimes, as ridiculous as that may seem, certain days of the week, there's higher approvals that we see than on other days. So making sure that we're applying at the right time, making sure that we're, um, if, if most, of our, most of the banks only pull one credit bureau when they look at your credit, uh, so we find out which banks in which state pull which credit bureau. So yeah. that way, if you've got a stronger TransUnion score opposed to your experience score, we'll make sure that we go to the banks that just pull TransUnion. So we follow all of the guidelines and the stuff that we've learned from the banks in order to get you approved. Um, another big thing is, too, most banks nowadays outsource their actual underwriting. Yeah. They outsource it to a third party. There's a, there's a very large company that's owned by U.S. Bank that underwrites like over 3,000 banks and credit unions across yeah. the country. So if you're applying on your own, you might apply at, let's say, three different banks, thinking you're applying at three different places. And in reality, they're all, they're all funneled to the same underwriting company. And since computers are very smart, but they're also very dumb at times, right? They, they can't, the computer system can't differentiate that these are coming from three different institutions. And it just it kicks all of them out as duplicate applications and declines them. So you'll get a decline letter in the mail thinking that you were declined for a loan. And in reality, you would just need to call and explain you know, a couple simple things and you get it approved. And most people don't realize that a lot of, nine, probably 90% of the people out there on their credit report have things that probably are false. Completely, yes. Yes, there's a lot of times that there's misinformation on your credit report, whether, whether it's truthfully misinformation, like just some you know, case of mistaken identity kind of thing, or even identity theft. Um, there's a lot of that on people's credit reports. And in other situations, um, you know, we, we had a situation where there was a, uh, a guy came to us and he was looking for funding, and uh, he'd been declined at a bunch of different places, and, including a competitor of ours who did something very similar to us. And um, he, I asked him why he was declined, and he said, well, my TransUnion score is really high. Do you have anybody that can just fund just based on TransUnion? It's a very strange question. You don't, you don't yeah. really hear that usually, and it seemed like he understood credit a little bit too much, so it was yeah. very confusing. So I'm like, what do you mean your TransUnion score is higher? And he explained that he's a junior, and his dad has really good credit, and for whatever reason, his dad's credit was showing up on his TransUnion report, and his real credit was only showing up on his Experian and Equifax ah. report, the other two bureaus, which was like in the 500s, so we kept getting declined for them. So I kind of thought outside the box, and instead of trying to find lenders that just funded TransUnion, which I won't be able to get them so much then, right? I thought to myself, well, let's talk to your dad, yeah, because I'm sure it. your dad wants to see you succeed. Your dad has great credit. He's got a seven-something score. Use his credit. Let's use his credit instead. So we did that. So that's kind of something that happens a lot, though. Like, I'm, I'm also a junior, and when I went to go buy my first car, they told me that I didn't pay a bill from 1978. I wasn't alive in 1978, so that didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. So I started researching this. It turned out my dad's credit was showing up on mine. So it's, it's very common for people that are juniors that even though we all have our social security numbers and you would think that's what tracks everything, it really isn't. It's your, your, your name, your date of birth, and your address. So they use that information, and sometimes things report inaccurately to different people's So a lot reports. of people out there could have something really affecting their credit and really yes. limiting them for what they can get because something that's not even as BS. Not even theirs, yeah. Completely really inaccurate there. information. So all that kind of stuff can be removed very easily if you know what you're doing uh, from the credit reports. Uh, another thing is people who even have information that is reporting that you know they, they did do, right? They, they were late on a credit card. They, they, they missed a medical bill. They forgot to pay a speeding ticket. Any of these things that show up as collections on their credit report, even if that is something, <clears throat> excuse me, even if that is something that they didn't pay, 
Uh, there still are ways that we can attempt to get it removed. A lot of times these creditors, they don't report things properly to the credit bureau. And if they break any rule in the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which is kind of like the governing body over credit reports, if they break any of those rules and inaccurately report information, by law it has to be removed from the credit report. So we're successful removing bankruptcies, we're successful removing um, even student loans, which government debt is usually really, really difficult to get removed, but we're still, we've had you know student loans removed from credit reports, collections, late payments, you name it, there's a chance that we can get it removed off the report and get those scores you know, raised. You know, I look at this and again, I see money mm -hmm. as a tool. I mean, money is a tool to get to the next thing that you want to make more money. When I first started looking back like five years ago, I had to max out credit cards. I had to, yeah. I mean, again, it was a tool and that interest rate was high, but it was an expense. And the only way I knew to get the money I needed to be able to fund my endeavors to get to the point where I could make a lot of money. Yeah. And that was costly. I wish I would have had you five years ago or I could go to you and you would basically give me could sometimes 0% yes. and, and plus more options. And the, the beautiful thing I love, so for the entrepreneur looking back at my younger self, if looking at somebody that for my packages, when I sell a mastermind or I sell any kind of package, it could be anywhere from 15 to $30,000. And for most people starting out, they, they can't afford that. Yeah. But when they get that, it builds their foundation, which they can make money off it. So if they had somebody like you basically help them fund that, working off somebody else's money yep. and using that to make more money, pay it back, and then they could build up their own like establishment to make a lot of money from it, yep. it's a win-win. And then for me as an entrepreneur, obviously it helps me to, to sell my package and give some people, because there's a lot of people that come to me and I would love to help them. But when you, you know this, you're so busy. You have so many people that come to you. You can only, at the end of the day, you have to obviously build your business too. You have to feed everybody that works with you. You have to focus your time or the, the best ROI and obviously for it. So I see people that can't afford to pay for myself and I wanna help them, but I can't just go give out free lunches all yeah. the time. So if somebody like you was able to provide that for them, they could get the work, then I could work with them. In return, they make the money back. It's a win-win. Everybody makes money, yeah. everybody succeeds, it's justifiable, and it's not an interest rate of 20% that's killing them in the process. Yeah. There, there's so many missed opportunities because you don't have access to cash, right? And I think you hit the nail on the head too. A lot of business owners, they start their business with personal credit cards. They do. Because that's what they have access to right now. And the problem with that is kind of twofold. One, when you're using personal credit cards, and I'm not a CPA, but I'm pretty sure that most accountants would tell you not to use your personal credit cards for yeah. business expenses, yeah. right? Um, so that's, that's one problem with it. The other problem with it is when you use your personal credit cards for anything and you, you max those cards out, your score drops drastically. 35% yeah. your, your of your credit score is based off of the balances on your accounts. So if you have your cards maxed out, like I mean, if you have, you might have a 750 credit score with zero balances on your credit cards. If you max those cards out to buy one of these you know, programs or masterminds, you'll see your score drop 150 points. Like, I mean, it will drop initially. Yeah. And it won't stay there forever. It's not gonna drop forever, but it will drop. And uh, the reason is you look like you're overextended at the time. So on the flip side of that, if you were to have it in a business's name, if you have those same credit cards in a business name or any type of credit in a business name, it's not gonna report on your personal credits. You can max all that stuff out and it won't affect your score whatsoever. And now it's tax deductible because it's a business. So that's what for basically for you, like you you are giving people a small business loan, so it, it's considered that not yes. maxing a credit card. Exactly. It's exactly. much better route. Yeah, it's much better route for their credit, and it's much better, you know, tax purposes and all that kind of stuff. And and kind of going back to the whole, you know, having money available to people, um, you know, when, when they're going to these events trying to better themselves and, and, and you know grow their education. We were working with a seminar company and they were selling a very similar thing that you're talking about, yeah. basically a coaching package, right? And I asked them at the beginning, I said, look, how many people in your room, how many hands go up when you ask them, you know, how many people are interested in this product? And it's usually the entire room. I mean, there, people are there for a reason, you know what I mean? So yeah. as long as you're delivering decent content, the majority of people want to buy it, right? So he said pretty much everybody wants to. I'm like, well, how many people are actually able to convert on that? And it's you know, roughly five to 10% have the yeah. money available to purchase these yeah. services. So I said, what if you ask them, how many people in this room are interested in buying this package with no money out of pocket? everybody's hands go up again, right? Who wouldn't? So, so we, we basically, I mean, obviously not every single person in the room was able to get approved, yeah. but we, we drastically increased the amount of like, their conversion rate. I mean, these guys were, they were used to closing maybe five, 10 people out of the room and they were closing more like 20 people out of the room after we started working with them. So it's a huge difference for the, the think about the amount of people that left there frustrated 
because they so went they couldn't there, do it. And they were super pumped up. They're like, this is the answer to all And they lost all out of my on problems. opportunity where they could have met people, did deals. Definitely. They, they lost out on money. They lost out on networking opportunities. They lost out on all of that. They lost out on education, right? Imagine if you had to tell your kids one day, like, you know, oh, I'm sorry, we can't afford to go to college because and there's no loans for you. You're providing them the opportunity, the bridge to fill the gap to get the things they need, which again, pays that back and makes yeah. them more money, which they can go around and actually help other people in the future. So as an entrepreneur, I look back and when I first started, again, I didn't have any money. And, and wanting to work with these different people. By the way, I did find a mentor, which what I did is I used other people's money. I went to family and friends and I raised 10 grand in six weeks, broke out of college. Wow. And I took that money and I invested in a mentor, a pack, kind of like a mastermind package, but a mentor. And I told them I'd pay them, actually, it was a great deal. That I said I'd pay them 5% interest on it and pay their money back. And then once I made X amount of dollars, I'd pay them double the investment. And I ended up paying it back, I don't know, within a year or something. But I used their money to do it. And again, that was my way to get in. And looking back, all the different things I did along the way, I mean, there's other expenses. I mean, uh, using the credit card, doing this and that. And it cost me so much money. But it did get me to where I am today. Yeah. But at a much higher rate. And now when I go speak at events and I offer these packages, high dollar packages, I look at my younger self and I'm like, I wanna help them. I wanna make them succeed. But again, like what we do is so valuable, yeah. but I can't just give this stuff for free because then they don't even value it. The thing is, if they would have that, and that's why even being able to work with you to give that to them, basically helping my younger self, here you go, here's the access to work with me. At the other day, when somebody works with me, I want to give them everything I got so on the day they get 10x the return. My goal is to make them money back, give them a damn good experience, and hopefully they go and change the world and be like my younger self. So as a fluencer, I can help them get the money, work with me, I get paid, everybody gets paid, and then eventually, hopefully one day, they have the same opportunity as an influencer and they do the same thing. It's a domino effect. So I, it's totally, totally like justifiable, it's smart, it's genius, and that's why I, I can't believe I didn't find you sooner. I, what, I, like, where were you? I've been and hiding I, from you. I've I had to hiding. go to Grant Cardone's Growth Con to have you come up to me and talk to me. I'm like, who's this guy? Yeah. And then from watching my videos, and then what do you know? We're working. It's just crazy how things work, but it's so crazy to think. Again, using some other people's money to leverage it, to make more money, pay it back, and continue to do it. Even multi, you look at millionaires. You look at people that are doing big numbers. They're still using other people's oh, money. Oh, completely. Every one of them. Still. Yeah. And it, why wouldn't they? Genius. It's like we're talking with somebody today in client years where he's like, well, I got 100000 in my bank account. I could use that. Or I could use 100000 of somebody else's money. You're like, I mean, let's use somebody else's right. money. Why would I risk my own? Yeah. Why, why? <laughs> so so for you, what do you, what do you want to do with this? Where is this going? Yeah. Where's your future with this? What's your goal with this company, Pathway Financial? I mean, my main thing is, is, like you said, I mean, you didn't even know this existed. So, so the main thing is to try and get out there and, and reach as many business owners as possible to make it possible for them. Uh, there's a lot of people that, I mean, really my, my passion, honestly, is the startup companies. I mean, yeah. I, I love working with everybody. I'll help as many people as I can. But I love working with the little guy who has a great idea, who doesn't think that he has a chance to actually do anything with it because he wasn't born into a wealthy family and he doesn't have anybody to lean on. I love being able to help that guy get access yeah. to capital and be able to watch him and his business grow. So that's really where my passion is. Um, that's what I like to focus on. It makes me excited. You know what I mean? Give me one example, somebody you work with. Um, yeah, so just, just recently, I mean, I think, uh, I think we actually talked about this a little bit earlier, but I'll, I'll touch on it a little more. So there was a, I went to, I do a lot of real estate networking groups and stuff like that. And uh, because obviously it gives us a lot of business and I yeah. can help you know, real estate investors. And there was a guy there, he was, he was a younger guy, he was a hustler and he was out there trying to, he was a contractor, he did you know, remodeling. And he was out there not to try and get involved in real estate, but he was out there trying to make a couple of bucks helping out rehab houses. So he figured I could find some clients while I'm here, hand out some business cards, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So I started talking to him and I asked him, I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know, why, why are you here? And he explained that to me. And I'm like, so you're not interested in getting involved in real estate? And he was like, oh, I'd love to, but I don't have any money. So that's why I work with these guys. You know, these are the rich guys with money. So I just, you know, I kind of pick up the scraps and I kind of do what I can and I kind of help yeah. them out with the houses and make money. And I was like, well, why can't you get access to the money? And he explained to me that, you know, he just, he, he, he didn't have credit and he didn't, you know, have any financials to back up how much you know, he, money he needed. So I kind of educated him on the whole thing and we helped him. His aunt actually is the one that co-signed for him. Um, so we he used his aunt as a credit partner. We got him access to, a, I think it was a little over $100,000 worth of, uh, of business credit lines. He was able to use that to start buying houses. So now not only was he at these meetings at this point trying to find, I mean, he still does his rehab work as well, 
but he's actually out there buying and selling houses as well, and he's making a ton more money, and he's happier. Everybody loves, I mean, you see all the TV yeah. shows and stuff. It's a popular thing to do right now. Yeah. Buying and selling houses, yeah. it's fun, right? And money's fun. Yeah, money's so, fun. Money's fun. So, I mean, it took this guy, I mean, he was a kid at that time. I think he was like 19, 20 years old, and uh, he kind of was a hustler, and he was, you know, rehabbing houses, just making a little bit of money, and now he's buying and selling the houses that he's rehabbing. So, so you helped that kid go from where he was at, which he even think he had what it took to be able to make more money. Yeah. He's like, well, the rich people do that. Well, Little most people don't realize they have the same opportunity. They do, and they don't teach this stuff. You know, this stuff isn't taught in school. Credit isn't taught in school. Yeah. Pe people come out of college in debt, and they usually have bad credit, right? Yeah. Not from student loans, yeah. but they usually get their first couple credit cards. They max them out. They miss a payment. They're paying bar tabs on them. They do whatever they can, and they usually come out of college with bad credit. And nobody ever taught them how to use their credit or what goes into credit. So educating people on that, trying to help them, you know, better their credit scores to where they get into a position to get this, you know, zero percent financing and get the best interest rates and everything that they purchase. Just, you know, that, that's really, I, I see where the value is. You know, I, more people need to know about this. I know for one, you're coming, well, to the Live to Grind event, you're gonna yeah, be there, December. and people that need money for investing in any kind of package it may be, yeah. you'll give them the resources for that. So again, he's gonna be at the Live to Grind event, Bill's gonna be there hanging out, and, and downtown LA, by the way, just we just got the, the venue, everything booked, which I'm excited about. We're gonna have a lot of fun, dude. This yeah, definitely. venue is like badass. It's not cheap. But it's <laughs> badass. So before, do you have the financing in place already? Maybe <laughs> I, can help you out, or? I mean, right. I guess. <laughs> but no, before before we go, looking back on your journey, I mean, helping yeah. people uh, get the money they need and through this industry, what would be kind of the things you've taken away or just advice to give any entrepreneur business? or somebody maybe even working in corporate that wants to start their business, best advice for them to have success? I think the main thing is taking the leap of faith. So many people stop themselves moving forward because A, yeah. they're, they're concerned that they're gonna fail. They're concerned that they don't have you know, the, the cushion you know, to kind of you know, move forward with, with access to money. And it's kind of like if you have passion for something, you need to do whatever you can to get there. Because look, at the end of the day, whatever material things you're afraid of losing, you didn't have those things the day before you bought them, right? Exactly. So you can live without them. So if that's what you're passionate about, do what's gonna make you happy, things tend to work themselves out. And if you need access to money, there are options out there. Don't just go into the bank and then throw on the towel when they tell you no, because I'm telling you they are gonna tell you no, all right? Do some research, learn how to get around, you know, the all the, all the red tape that's involved in finance nowadays. Hire out to somebody, whether it's my company or somebody else's, Go somewhere where you can get access to capital that's affordable and it's gonna put you in a position to kind of better yourself and grow your business. I mean, I say just keep moving forward, man. Keep grinding. That's, I love you say that because I look at all the things I had to sacrifice and all the, the money I lost and like sleeping in my truck and traveling and, and maxing out cards. You know, for me, I'm like, you know what? Some people are like, dude, you're gonna ruin your credit. Some people are probably like, like, what if you go bankrupt? All this stuff, I'm like, you know what? If I want this bad enough, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. Yeah. And I did, I found ways. It kept giving me the next, next month. And then all of a sudden I had hit the things I need to do. Like I, all of a sudden the money just started coming because I didn't quit. I didn't care, I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get there. And I love what you said, I mean again, who cares about their stuff? You lose it, whatever. You gotta go sleep in your parents' couch, whatever. If you just keep going, and what defines the people that make and don't, the really successful people in life, is the ones that are willing to risk it all to go for it. And I know you've been there and I've been in this situation, willing to risk everything. And when you do that, if you're all in, you burn the ships and just go forward, you're eventually gonna get to where you wanna go the cash will come, yeah. and one day you can tell the story like we are today, this is what I did, here's how I got here. So willing to risk it all, and at this point, you don't have to risk it all with somebody you really like you. Don't. You can, I mean, you can start out too, I mean, it's so many people, and I, I, I personally feel like if you're not all in, it, it kind of lessens your chances of, you of being be able in. to move forward. But for somebody who wants to um, start like an e-commerce business, right? it doesn't take that much time and effort to do it. You can no. do that on the side while you're still working your job. You can drop to part-time and do that while you kind of scale things. I mean, me personally, I think you should be all in, but like you have options. You don't need to have a ton of cash to get moving forward. A lot of times you don't need any money to start. There's so many things you could do nowadays that you can just start they generating just don't know income that they don't know I about. I mean, this interview alone, I imagine most of the listeners are gonna be like, whoa, I never knew this option, where it'll maybe make them quit their full-time job. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna start my business finally. Because a lot of things is, people come to me, I'm like, why don't you go to your business full time? I don't get enough runway. What if it doesn't work? I go broke. Well, what if you had the cash yeah. to give you the things you need to invest in your business instead of going and giving up 50% or whatever it yep. is to do that? 
So if somebody wanted to work with you yeah. to just maybe figure out what it was like to potentially get a small business loan, where could they find you? Yeah, so best place to reach us, go directly to our website, which is www.pathwayfinancial.org. Nice, nice. Yeah. Anybody listening? So this guy, again, I'm looking back on my journey. I'm looking back and <laughs> throwing money on credit cards and, and just losing out on so much opportunity, paying high interest rates and scrapping by. If I would have had you a long time ago, it would have saved a lot of headache. But now, like, people know about you. Connect with this guy. Seriously, money is a tool. If you can use other people's money to be able to get you to where you want to go to make money, pay that back, and continue to grow up that, the rich people, that's the secret. That's what they do. My, my mentor is everybody, OPM, other people's money. If you can learn how to use other people's money to get to where you want to go and continue to grow, you can scale and make a multi-million dollar company and hire other people's money. Connect with him, check it out. And by the way, he's going to be at Live to Grind event. Looking forward They're to it. they hanging out and uh, having some fun. For all of you listening right now, take that leap, have some fun. But as always, go out there, create something great, and become unforgettable. Because life is too short not to. I'm Bernie C. Adams. Have a great day.